Uh, I'm not thrilled about recording myself, but I'm here for the benefit of the people. So here we go. We're going to take a look at page seven in our notes. Page seven in our notes. So yesterday we watched that video clip on the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And so the question is, what's the point of that? Uh, let's relate this to the atom. I'm going to cover up some of this so we'll go through uh, one item at a time. So in that Heisenberg uncertainty principle, we were looking at basically matter waves, and we figured out that we cannot know two things at once. We cannot know both the position and the momentum of an moving object, such as an electron. So position is just a fancy name for location. So if you know the location of an electron, by the time you measure uh, the location, know exactly where the electron is, it's no longer there anymore. It's already moved, all right? And if you're able to measure the momentum, which is like a fancy name for the speed and direction the electron's moving, by the time you measure which direction it's headed, you don't know its position anymore because it now has moved. We got something squeaky in the hallway, of course. All right. Number two, that means we cannot predict the future location of particles such as electrons. And therefore, if we can't predict the future locations of particles such as electrons, then the Bohr model doesn't work. There's flaws with the Bohr model. So Niels Bohr, he developed his model, and he basically said that electrons are orbiting the nucleus like planets orbit the sun. And if the electrons were taking a fixed path around the nucleus, then we should be able to measure where they're at and where they're headed. But we can't. All right, the math doesn't work. All right, so electrons are not orbiting the nucleus. So electrons do not orbit so what are they doing that's a good question so i'm gonna skip ahead to the next slide if anybody is still writing please speak up or if anybody wants me to go back to a previous slide please please ask me to do so and i will all right next slide so that brings us to the quantum mechanical model of the atom so we're going to combine previous ideas things that we talked about the first half of the unit we got to treat the electron like a wave. I remember that double slit experiment. We fired single electrons at two slits, and the electron interfered with itself, which means that the electron was in two places at once. The electron went through both slits at the same time, interfered with itself, and created a wave pattern. So electrons could be in more than one place at once. And electrons also have quantized energy. So there's only of energy that an electron can have. Uh, so based on its position, based on its orbital, we, we, we know how much electron energy is there. Electrons that have more energy are going to be found farther away from the nucleus. Electrons that have less energy will be found closer to the nucleus. We talked about that yesterday, too. Uh, the quantum mechanical model says that it's impossible to state the exact position and momentum of an electron. But we can give you a pretty good idea. We can figure out where it's probably going to be found right, most of the time. All right, so the quantum mechanical model, we can calculate, we can figure out where an electron spends most of its time and give you sort of a probable location for it. Right, anybody have any questions about this slide? All right, that brings us to the next page. So scroll down to page eight or flip the page. Ah, so I got some images embedded here that aren't, aren't in your notes. This will help me explain some of these concepts a little bit better. So we use something called electron density to sort of map out and to give people an idea where an electron is probably going to be found. So in this image, this is, imagine like a time-lapse video. So imagine you had like this super camera that could see electrons. Here's our nucleus. This is helium, two protons, two neutrons. So helium has two electrons. And if you could take, let's say, a photo once a second, every second for let's say a day and take all those images and superimpose those images on top of each other. This shows you where the electron was uh, over time. All right, so where the shading is darker, that is where the electron spent more time. And where the shading is lighter towards the edges, that is where the electron spent less time. So what scientists like to do is that they like to give you an idea of where the electron is found and they use 90% as a cutoff boundary. So I'm drawing a circle here, and what I'm doing here, this is approximate. I'm saying that an electron is 
most likely going to be found within this shaded region 90% of the time. That's my confidence level. All right. So 10% of the time, it'll be found other places, but the majority of the time, the electron will be found within the shaded region. Right. So higher shading, electron spends more time there. Lighter shading, electron spends less time there. And the big idea, page eight, electrons are not orbiting the nucleus. We like to use models like this. That's more for like middle school, just you know, giving kids a, a feel for what electrons seem like they're doing, but they're not. So electrons are not orbiting. It's too hard to explain this whole quantum mechanical model. Where are electrons found? They're found in these 3D spaces. These 3D spaces are called orbitals. And think of the word orbital, meaning like electron bunk bed. Bunk beds can hold two people. An electron orbital can hold two electrons. All right, so when you see the word orbital, think bunk bed, electron bunk bed. A place, a room for electrons where two electrons are found. But the motion of electrons, very erratic, very random. They can be moving left, right, up, down. They're not going to be going in these circular spherical orbits. All right, and that brings us to letter C, page eight. All right, atomic orbitals. These are regions around the nucleus. Regions around the nucleus where an electron with a certain amount of energy is likely going to be found. All right, so it's a region where an electron that has a certain energy value is probably going to be found, right? And that magic number is 90% of the time. So orbitals, just like in the boarding in ChemQuest 4B, the first part, just like those rooms, they have different shapes, right? Different sizes. The pink rooms were bigger, they had three bunk beds, the S room, the sunny rooms are smaller, they only had one bunk bed. Well, different orbitals, different regions within the atom uh, that contain electrons can have different shapes. And we'll look at that next. They can have different sizes. And the electrons can have different energies. The drawings that we're going to look at on the next slide show the three-dimensional space within which the electron is found once again 90% of the time. Anybody have any questions? So it's, this is like a three-day topic here. So today is like the first day. We're going to start to apply this on Tuesday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So when we start looking at these pictures, if you're completely lost, I know that as that's normal at this point in time, but we'll try to make sense of it come Tuesday, come Wednesday. All right, here we go. Next slide. If, you're, if I'm going too fast, somebody go back, please. So what do the sublevels look like? So in the boarding house, the different sublevels, the floors, the levels were broken up in the pink rooms and sunny rooms. Here we see S sublevels, S orbitals. We see pink, but they're not pink. That's P stands for uh, an orbital. That stands for a dumbbell shaped region. And we got D's. We also have F's too. So I want to show you this. All right, let's break this down one at a time. I'm going to put a box around this. An S orbital is home for two electrons. Now you're thinking, what are these lines? So let me help you make sense of this. There's three axes here, X, Y, Z axes. Where they intersect, the intersection point in the middle, that is where our positive, our protons, our neutrons are. That's our nucleus. So our nucleus is right here in the center. This shaded region outside, this is called an orbital. And that is where two electrons can go. Two electrons can share the same space. It's like two people can share a bunk bed, one on the top, one on the bottom. Two electrons can share the same space, the same orbital. So for S, the shape is spherical. So look at that perfect circle, 3D circle. It's a sphere. All right, so the electrons we found there 90% of the time. For P, Now look at this. One, each one of these pictures represents a bunk bed. All right, so two electrons can go here. Like one electron could go, right here's our nucleus, right here in the center point, the intersection point. So in theory, one, one electron could go above the nucleus in this pocket of space, and one electron could go down here below the nucleus in this pocket of space. Here we got our, we'll call it the z-axis, of front and behind. So one electron could go behind the nucleus, and so one electron could go in front of the nucleus. And then we got our x-axis. One electron could go to the left of the nucleus, and one electron could go here to the right of the nucleus. 
So look, there's regions, there's homes for six electrons here. Two can go here, two can go here, two can go here. And we say that these have a dumbbell shape. So if you're going to the gym, you're like, I'm gonna do some bicep curls, grab the 20 pound weight, start pumping out some curls to make look good for the beach next summer. That's what it looks like. That's what they call them. And then down, look at the bottom, D. Things get a little crazy now. In our boarding house, we didn't have any D, D rooms. If we had D rooms, we'd have rooms that's a bunk bed, that'd be huge rooms. So there's five different orbitals that make up the D sublevel. All right, they're crazy looking. This first one here is just really crazy looking. But two electrons can go in this shaded region. And then two could go here, two could go here, two could go here, two could go here. And people tend to say, except for that first one, they, they tend to say that these homes, these orbitals have a, uh, I'm sorry, a fan talking here and I combine two things into one. Fan blades, they look like blades of a fan. Uh, some people say they look like double dumbbells. Here, they're sort of found on the 45 degree angles for the most part. Sort of the spaces in between the axes, not always, but. So that's some background information. So we want to be able to tell people where electrons are found within the atoms. Now we're going to start to get into quantum numbers a little bit. Anybody have any questions about this slide? And we're going to look at a video clip on Tuesday that shows you how these orbitals all fit together. I'm not trying to overwhelm you in one day. Wait, so only two electrons can be found in each spherical or each... So yeah, each, each set of axes, the shaded regions, can hold two electrons. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so S's can hold two, P can hold six, and D's can hold up to ten electrons because there's more spaces. And think of each space, each picture, as a bunk bed, a place where two electrons can go. All right, so uh, let's look at the next slide. So and I'm going to erase this. I forgot to erase this last class. But let's say you're on a European vacation, right? And you're going to Italy and you're sitting on a beach. And you're in the Mediterranean at a beach in Italy. And, and you meet someone nice. And you start talking to them. And they're like, where are you from? And you're like, try to give them your address. But you start out as general as you can. So what's the most general piece of your address? Assuming that you're hanging out on a beach in Italy talking to somebody. You could say, I live in the... United States. So the most generic part of your address is your country. I, and the person you're talking to says, wow, I, I live in the United States too. Like the next question that he or she has is probably which state, which state do you live in? You're like Pennsylvania. You're like, oh my goodness, I live in Pennsylvania too. And they're like, what city, what town, right? So you could say, oh, I live in uh, Malvern. I'm like, oh my goodness, I live in Berwyn. We're like practically neighbors. And then hopefully they don't ask any more questions, but if they ask you another question, you might be assigned to run. What's the last question they might ask you? What's the most specific thing you can tell a person about your address? Your street address. You're like, I live in 101 King Street. The next thing you know, you have a stalker, right? You don't want that. So never tell somebody your street address. But right, Well, electrons, electrons have four parts of their address. And that's what we're trying to get at here. We're trying to figure out where are the electrons within an atom so that way we know how it's going to bond and what shape of molecules it's going to form, and we can predict a lot about its behavior. So when we're talking about electrons, electrons have four numbers called quantum numbers that show the unique address of each and every electron. So no two electrons have the exact same address. And all we're going to do today is look at the first three quantum numbers, introduce this to you, and then uh, I'll have you finish up ChemQuest 4B. So number one. The first part of an address, so think of the country, the most generic piece of an electron's address, is what energy level is it in? So think of ChemQuest 4A, there's seven energy levels, energy level one, energy level two. So the first quantum number called the principal quantum number basically tells you the distance, how far the electron is from the nucleus on average. One is closest and seven is farthest away. So if an electron has more energy, it can be found farther away from the nucleus. So every electron's address starts out with a one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven. 
So if the first number is six, that tells you that it's in the sixth energy level. Right, it's out here. The first number of the address is three. That tells you it's in the third energy level. Two more slides. Any questions about this one? The first quantum number, which energy level is it in? How far away is it from the nucleus? Second quantum number, fancy name, don't be like intimidated by the name, it's called azimuthal quantum number. This is basically the shape of the region, of the home. All right, there's four different sublevels, four different shapes of regions that electron can uh, occupy. There's S's, which are spherical. So this is our S. There's uh, P's, the P sublevel. There's dumbbell shape homes. There's three different orbitals, three different types of P. You got D's, and D's, there's five different regions, five different orbitals, and each orbital can hold two electrons. And there's F, so look how crazy the shape of F's are. So F, each, each F orbital, can hold two electrons. So look, count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven different Fs. Each one can hold two electrons. And so 14 electrons would go in the F. So S, P, D, and F represent the different shapes of the regions that these electrons can be found. So that's the second quantum number. All right, that's going to tell you. So for instance, if it's a second energy level electron and it's found in a P dumbbell shape region, the third quantum number is there's because there's multiple orbitals for everything but S, you got to specify which orbital is it in. So I was thinking back to the boarding house. If, uh, if you're staying in a pink room, you're like, all right, sir, you're staying in the second floor pink room. And that person goes up to the second floor pink room. They're going to want to know, like, am I in the first bunk bed, second bunk bed, or third bunk bed? So that third quantum number is called the magnetic quantum number. And that's basically going to specify which orbital, which bunk bed within that sublevel is the electron residing. And so the S's have one orbital, one bunk bed. P's have three. D's have five. F's have seven. So, for instance, if uh, we're talking about electron, electron is found in the 2P. And we'll make more sense of this Tuesday and Wednesday. Sorry, right. if you're in a 2P, second energy level P-shaped region, like are you in this one, or are you in this one, or are you in this one? So you need to specify x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. And so that's the purpose of the third quantum number. And we'll save the rest. We'll save the rest for uh, next time. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to stop recording. All right. Thank you for letting me record. Let me remember how to stop recording. It's been so long since last year since I recorded something.